Hello again, my name is Jason, and today I'm going to be reviewing <clears throat> Carnifex, which is book one in The Legends of the Nameless Dwarf by D.P. Pryor, P-R-I-O-R, instead of the Y. Um, anyway, uh, let's see, where to begin? So, let's start with an interesting fact. So, uh, Carnifex, I did not know this until today. I was looking up... Um, some information about the the book and trying to find a picture of the cover and everything. Carnifex evidently means butcher or executioner. That's kind of foreshadowing uh, the the uh, the rest of this book. Uh, but like I said, I didn't know that until today. To start out with, the the main protagonist of the book is Carnifex Thane. Uh, he is a dwarf. He rare, wears um, the red cloak of the ravine guard he's kind of um he's kind of it's it's hard to to exactly stratify where he sits in in uh dwarvish uh in dwarvish society he's he's not low class he's more high class but he's he may or he's not quite a noble but kind of is um dwarvish society in this book is is stratified uh, around what they feel is important so people there's a there's a, a woman in the book who um, carnifex is very interested in and she is She's a brewer. She owns uh, one of the more popular uh, breweries in in <clears throat> in their city, and at, and as such, she commands high respect in Dwarvish society. Um, so, <clears throat> starting out with the dwarves have secluded themselves uh, due to errors in the past that their society made. <clears throat> they have driven themselves into exile, uh, you could say. And uh, they live in this ravine city that they call Arx Gravis. Now, ravine, this to me it seems uh, a bit of a misnomer. Uh, I think of a, a ravine as kind of a valley, and maybe that's my misinterpretation where theirs is more like a crack in the ground, and they live way down deep inside of it. And, you know, the light of day barely reaches them, because only when it's directly overhead do they see the sun. So they live in this ravine city, and um, one day a uh, homunculus, uh, to me, homunculus is a, a being that was an artificially created being, um, kind of a Frankenstein, if you will, uh, or grown in a vat. But they call it homunculus, also known as a deep gnome, uh, comes to their city, and there's a uh, theft of one of their archives. Now, the dwarves are very, very, like I said, they're very set in their ways. It's not just that they uh, are hiding underground and whatnot, exiling themselves from society for mistakes that they've made in the past it's they're basically in stasis as much as they can possibly manage uh, they want nothing to change they want nothing new they want everything to be the same and so they have a council that uh, basically rejects anything new and tries to keep everything uh, uh, bottled up and, and they try to keep their progress from, you know, from making progress. They try to keep the, the dwarf society, um, I wouldn't say repressed because they're doing it to themselves. They're not actually enforcing it on outside, on, on, they're not enforcing it on their citizens. It's just that all the dwarves have this mentality and that they need to repress themselves and to do that, they are very much set in their ways. So anything new is a threat to society. So this this theft, of, um, and it's not necessarily 
really a theft. Uh, yes, the, the gnome breaks in and stuff, and, and the guards go chasing after it and whatnot, uh, and it escapes into the underworld, but at the same time, um, it introduced a new element to society. And, and as I recall, the homunculus actually, when they figured out what it, it had stolen from the scriptorium, um, it uh, shows that <clears throat> maybe the dwarves didn't know everything about their society and how it was supposed to be, uh, or how the past was. And so maybe they were wrong, uh, but they're still set in their ways. So Carnifex, Carnifex, as I said, he's a, a, a red cloak, uh, a ravine guard. They also have the black cloaks, which are the secret police, and they are answerable, answerable to one man, but those secret police have quite a bit of power in their realm. Um, there's kind of an animosity between the red cloaks and the black cloaks, because the, the red cloaks are, are open, they're out there in the open, whereas the black cloaks are hidden and they don't, and they, the red cloaks kind of despise them for going behind the scenes and stuff and not being upright and honorable. Um, now, Carnifex is, is typical for a dwarf. Um, he is very uh, strong, very loyal. Um, he, uh, he drinks, I mean, it's a dwarf, they drink beer. Um, and one of the things that they bring out, uh, or they, uh, that the author D.P. Pryor brings out in, um, in Carnifex is that, uh, he suffers from depression. He has that, um, I, I hesitate to say humanizing factor, uh, just because he's a dwarf, uh, but, um, uh, that little, um, something extra to make him more relatable. I'm not saying that everybody has uh, this uh, bout, these bouts of depression or anything, but be, when you inter interject flaws into your characters, they become more relatable because they're not perfect. They're not held up as the ideal. They You can see bits of yourself in the character because we recognize our own flaws, and the, the author is uh, sitting there going, hey, look, this guy has has flaws. This guy has something that makes him more than just a paragon. Now, I'm not saying that you can't have someone who's a paragon and and relate to them. It's just that um, this it, it does tend to deepen the character and make them more of a fleshed out individual. So um, Thane has a brother named Lucius. Lucius is more of a scholarly type, and he uh, um, pals around with a, a a human, or at least human appearing, uh, mage, mage scholar, the only one that's been allowed into the Dwarf City. His name is Aristodeus. Um, anyway, uh, they're palling around, and there's there's something about this this Aristodeus, and he knows more about the the two the dwarves than than he's letting on, especially about Carnifex and his brother Lucius. Um, he shows uh, an almost unnatural interest in these two. Uh, but because of the things, that the situation that's going on, um, Lucius comes to determine, the, or, or comes to the conclusion that a part of Dwarven history uh, is actually a, a reality and not just something that they like to tell each other. And that's the, the Acts of the Dwarf Lords. It's a magical item that that is legendary and it uh, they don't necessarily believe it exists it's just a story nice story but lucius decides to find it and uh his brother gets dragged into into this as well because obviously he's trying to um he does carnifex is the more physical one and he knows that it's going to be dangerous and so he goes along to protect his brother um I want to stop before I get too deep into, um, I mean, this is book one of The Nameless Dwarf. Um, how does he become to be nameless? Uh, what, what, um, and that would be spoiling it. That would be too much information at this point. Uh, but needless to say, there's, there's stuff about Carnifex that's not readily apparent. Um, 
there's there's stuff that's been hidden from him, uh, been hidden by his parents, by Aristodeus. Um, there are things about uh, the Dorvan society. Why did they exile themselves and stuff themselves down into this this uh, crack in the ground and refuse to come out and refuse to have anything to do with anyone else around them? Um, if you are interested in uh, fantasy and dwarves and stuff, this is going to be a good book for you. Um, you can also kind of think, uh, you know, if you, I mean, if you look here on the cover, gritty, intense, brutally tragic, it is gritty. It is intense. There is a lot of brutality in it. Uh, um, I mean, he's, you can see the eyes glowing red, and the, the axe that he's holding in his hands. Um, there's a lot of, of bloodshed uh, in this uh, as it goes forward. Um, and uh, there's a lot of mystery behind how Carnifex, we know him as Carnifex Thane. How did he become, it's, you know, kind of like I said, this is kind of leading you. How did he become the Nameless Dwarf? Um, how did he lose his name? Uh, or was it taken from him? That kind of thing. They're, they're interesting questions. It's an interesting uh, society, interesting story. A couple of things on the, the con side. It's a little bit slow in places. Um, <clears throat> also, there's a... It needs to be done well, and I don't know that D.P. Pryor did it very well um, with the Dameless Dwarf series. I, I haven't read any of his other books. Um, <clears throat> I have read. Uh, I think I think I still need to read one more book in the Nameless Dwarf series, uh, but uh, there's a certain amount of, of technology and magic that coexist, and um, it, in my in my mind they shouldn't. They should be completely separate, mostly because it's not done well when they're melded together, and it creates for a jarring contrast just shouldn't be done. That said, I do believe that it can be done well and that it has been done well. Um, <clears throat> for instance, I, I do enjoy reading the Warhammer fantasy series and that has, you know, that has airships and stuff that the dwarves make, tanks, cannons, that kind of stuff. Um, so it has that level of technology, but there are also mages and things that go along with it. Um, <clears throat> That being said, I felt that the technology aspect wasn't necessarily handled very well within the magical system. Within, I shouldn't say magical system, just in the magical world, in the in that sense. Anyway, uh, there's a lot of stuff beyond uh, in the world in in what's going on in the mythology that that created these societies and things, and so. There's a lot bigger world out there than just what you read in in, uh, in the book of the nameless and the legends of the nameless dwarf. So, um, it's a good read. Uh, there are a couple of things, but there are usually a couple of things in any book you read. There are hardly any of them are what I would call perfect. So anyway, um, that's it for the name uh, for Carnifex, Legend of the Nameless Dwarf. Uh, let me know questions or comments down below as always like and subscribe and uh, turn on the notifications and then if you have any i'm going to repeat myself any questions let me know uh and and as always like what you're reading